host Ivan Benediktov, Soviet Minister of State Farms. From Afghanistan and Iceland, India, China, Ceylon, Haiti, Holland, Argentine, Peru. Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Kent is here to represent Her Majesty the Queen. The longing to be free, the need to be free, is part of the rightful heritage of man, a heritage denied to colonial Africa until now. A few hours earlier, the Duchess of Kent had flown into Accra. Governor Sir Charles Arden Clark and Prime Minister Dr. Kwame Nkrumah were there to receive her. With her, the Duchess of Kent brings the Queen's mandate, which is to change the constitutional status of this country, and the Queen's Godspeed to this newest dominion of the British Commonwealth. For Dr. Nkrumah, main architect of Ghana's independence, this is a day of fulfillment. Her gracious task is formally to untie, in the name of the Queen and the British people, the political bonds of colonial rule. It is a task that could be framed only by a great people conscious of its strength, willing to move with the times, jealous of its good name. As she enters our capital city, chiefs and notables welcome her in the old ways. These have always been our custom. A traditional libation is poured that God should give his blessing. Old coasters like me have seen a few libations in our time, but none as happy as this one. So many handshakes and introductions, all the ceremonial occasions of a people whose care for dignity is deep and courteous. We are a nation born with a mission. The point is so plain that nobody can miss it, and we rightly proclaim our acceptance of this assignment by planting in the middle of our national flag the lodestar of hope for all the black peoples of Africa. We are to demonstrate to our fellows, not with high words, but by the quality of our national life, that indeed it is a good and a necessary thing to be a free people. That in fact, God has given black Africans also, as he has given everybody else, the capacity to attain the full stature of man. It's more than a hymn today, it's many things. It's a thanksgiving, a pledge for the future, a way of saying what you feel when the words won't come. of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you, upon our rulers and chiefs, and upon this nation, now and always. Amen. Durban, the chiefs and paramount chiefs and kings and rulers by tradition have also journeyed to greet Her Royal Highness. From the green hills of Ashanti and the far savannas of the north, from the forest land beyond the Volta River and the surf-rimmed Blue Atlantic shore, they're here with their tribal dignitaries, with their crowns and coronets of beaten gold, their golden staffs of authority and judgment. are the insignia of an old tradition. 
Our land was not made yesterday. Our beginnings return into the mist of a thousand years. The name we have chosen, Ghana, is the name of an African civilization that flourished and was famous for its wealth and civic order in centuries before the Normans crossed the English Channel, whose name was still alive upon the lips of men when Columbus found America. And now the wheel of history comes full circle. After these centuries, after slavery, conquest, colonial rule, after trusteeship, partnership, anything but freedom, now at last the old independence is recovered. The chiefs assert once more their pride and dignity, glittering and potent symbols of the link between what is long since gone and what is now to come. Welcome of a nation determined to be modern, up to date. Square bashing, here and blind and swear, just like everyone else. Never mind, they're all right. I've served with them, Burma and the Far East. Africans aren't right for independence. That's what a lot of us thought. Well, it looked as though we were wrong. Not right for independence. They said it and they said it and they said it. Boy, we got sort of tired of hearing that word. Sure, we'll make plenty of muddles and mistakes, but it's better to make your own mistakes than to suffer from the mistakes that others make for you. Sadness, the sadness, dignity, and deep delight. The human thing. All of this speaks through their dance. Red, gold, green. The colors of the Ghana flag. That's red for the self-sacrifice, the lives that were the cost of Ghana's freedom. And gold for its minds and green for its tall and brilliant forests. These are the colors that make a background to the black star of Ghana, the lodestar of African freedom. the day for the finals, all the finals, canoe races, running races, bicycle races, competitions up and down the length and breadth of the land, dancing competitions, hair plaiting competitions, singing, talking, any kind of competition. These are all fishermen. They spend their lives in paddling out the cocoa that Ghana grows and delivering it to ocean steamers. Now, don't get it wrong, please. They have to run through the surf here in Accra, but we've modern harbors too. Takaradi, for instance. Today. Somewhere or other, everyone's a winner this afternoon. 
How fast can a horse run when the weather's as warm as this? Depends on your luck, they say. Horses and handsome women, they seem to go together no matter where you are. I'll tell you a story about it if I had the time. I've heard it said that Ghana has the prettiest girls in all of Africa. Well, Africa is big. Still, I wouldn't be surprised. A guest of the Prime Minister picks a winner. for Miss Ghana, winner in the nationwide contest for Ghana's loveliest girl. Now, what do they think about these gorgeous creatures? What do they say? My name is Monica Anagwafia, and I'm very glad to be the most beautiful girl in Ghana. Good luck, Monica. Fortnight's trip to England, that's her prize. See the like of that? That makes rock and roll look like it had long gray whiskers. That's steel band, all right. That's right out of yesterday night. You can get just about everything there is into a highlight. The things a woman says to you, the things she doesn't. Trouble with the boss, trouble with yourself, trouble you can laugh at so it isn't trouble anymore. And good things, too, like falling in love, <laughs> or not falling in love. Like happiness. Yes, like independence. You can be jolly, merry and gay, the 6th of March, Independence Day. That night, a state banquet at Ghana's new luxury hotel, the Ambassador in Accra. For Sir Charles Arden Clark, governor of the Gold Coast, and now to be the first governor general of Ghana, this is the climax of a long and notable career. During his distinguished governorship, Ghana becomes the first of Africa's colonies to win full independence. He proposes the toast of honor. Mr. Prime Minister, your Excellencies, my lords, none and arm, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the toast of Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Kent. at the time when an imperial people knows how to withdraw without bloodshed, without too much delay. I count it a privilege to have been asked by the Queen to take her part in a moment of such significance in the long and colorful history, not only of Ghana, but of the African continent as a whole. I offer my warmest good wishes for the future happiness of Ghana. May God bless and guide your endeavors. The Prime Minister replies, his words make history. Never before has any colony heard such words. With them, the subjection of Africa begins to end. They speak the independent future of his own country. They foretell the independent future of a continent. To celebrate with us, our independence. It will be the policy of the government of Ghana to develop the closest possible contacts with all other parts of the world. Rich in many things, in cocoa, in mines of diamonds and gold, in tall forests. But rich in faith and confidence as well, Ghana builds for the future. Schools, clinics, hospitals, factories, roads, harbors, power stations. Memorial to comradeship and friendship, to battles fought side by side and won.
I can remember the old days, the bush and what it meant. Being carried in a hammock, having baths in portable contraptions, you have no idea how darned uncomfortable. The fever, yes, and the way we dealt with it, quinine and whiskey. Mind you, all that stopped us from settling here. That's why, you know, this country isn't like Kenya. And now, it never will be like Kenya. Courts of law, museums, libraries, hotels, modern housing, seats of learning. All the fabric and the apparatus of a modern state. University College of the Gold Coast. Now of Ghana, of course. It was founded a handful of years ago as an academic daughter of London University. An enduring and valuable connection. Hundreds of young men and women have passed through our hands. On the quality of scholarship and teaching here, much of the future of this country will depend. We like to think that we are the keystone of that future. But freedom was not given. Men had to win it, struggle for it. Those who fell are not forgotten. I now have the great pleasure to unveil this national monument. Out of the darkness, the pledge and the promise. Here, but a handful of years ago, men laid down their lives for a cause that was not yet won, for freedom, for justice. Too long up there, making us other people's property. But behind that flag, fine, sincere people devoted to this country's good. There is friendship and affection between us. Midnight, March the 6th, 1957. Independence. Ghana belongs to herself, a dominion of the Commonwealth and a member of the United Nations. up there into the glossy African night, the lights of a new time. And people watching, thousands of people, fishermen too, out across the bay in their canoes, strings of canoes watching on the water, the starlight and the firelight in their eyes. I wonder how soon it will be that Africa has another show like this, meaning what this means. A spark, I've heard, can start a forest fire. drives in state to the Parliament of Ghana, there to make known the Queen's gracious message. It is 69 years since the first African unofficial member was nominated to the old Legislative Council of the Gold Coast Colony. It is six years since the first properly democratic elections were permitted. Yesterday, this parliament was subject to the Parliament of Britain. Today, its members owe loyalty only to the people of Ghana. Thus end, with dignity and honor, a hundred years of colonial occupation and colonial rule. With fitting ceremony, the Duchess of Kent reads to the representatives of Ghana in Parliament assembled the Queen's message of freedom. She tells them of the Queen's pride that today a new member of the Commonwealth is born. She gives them the Queen's congratulations and the Queen's best wishes. I have it in command from the Queen to read to you the following message from Her Majesty to her people in Ghana. I have entrusted to my aunt the duty of opening on my behalf the first session of the Parliament of Ghana. My thoughts are with you on this great day as you take up the full responsibilities of independent nationhood. It is my earnest and confident belief 
that my people in Ghana will go forward in freedom and justice, in unity among themselves, and in brotherhood with all the peoples of the Commonwealth. God bless you all. Elizabeth R. The Prime Minister goes to the throne and receives the Queen's message. From now onward, these will be the proceedings of a sovereign parliament. Waiting outside to see her, many thousands of people cheer Her Royal Highness. Great change is made, peacefully, in good friendship, in a manner befitting the will of the people of Ghana and the will of the people of Britain. I suppose we could have hung on, of course. We could have grit our teeth and called in the troops and somehow muddled through shot our way through. That's what it would have meant. Bad for other people, though, and bad for us. Out of date, greedy, stupid. Stupid, yes. Stupid even more than greedy. I come from India. I remember how we felt about the British before they decided to leave India. And I know how we Indians feel about them now. We used to dislike the British. We don't now. Triumph for his cause, for those who believed in that cause, who followed him. Yes, it looks easy now, but it was not easy. He tramped the streets for work. He took what jobs he could get. He scrubbed floors, he wiped dishes, moved hunks of carcass in a soap factory. He slept under the stars, under the cold stars of foreign cities. He knew hunger, he never gave up, and many befriended him. He wanted freedom. The cynical and the powerful laughed at him, flung names at him, veranda boy, subversive, agitator. But the people wanted freedom. They followed him. To the people, he said the simple things. Decency, hard work, self-respect, self-government, self-government now. Of the imperial government, he asked the simple things. Not gifts, not charity, but rights. The rights of man. The government put him in prison. They tried to forget him. They failed. Herbert Macaulay, Kaisley Hayford, Hutton Mills, Agre, Mensa Saba, the great names of West African rebirth are joined by another, Kwame Nkrumah. Wasn't always right, isn't always right, won't always be right. But he was right then, and he's right now. That's why people follow him. And what next? The story of free Africa is only now beginning. At the State House that night, the first dance of Her Royal Highness is for her host, the Prime Minister. Dancing together. In South Africa, that's pretty near crime. In Central Africa, the other day, they whipped an African for eating in a European hotel. That means, we're glad you came. Please come again. Warmly remembered, warmly thanked, Her Royal Highness returns to London. Her visit on this great occasion has confirmed once more the warmth of friendship which will continue to unite Ghana with Great Britain. So once you get dancing, you tend to go on. We went on all night. That night and the next. Can't remember how long. At the Hotel Ambassador. Some dance this way. And some danced another way, their own way. They danced everywhere, in village clearings, in market squares, in the streets. Come on, come on. 
a beat boogie, shake and do the rhythm of the rock a beat boogie, jump and do the rhythm of the rock a beat boogie, give me do the rhythm of the rock a beat even our European club, that dear old department of the stiff upper lip, had a tiny little dance of its own. The notice said, dress, of course, will be strictly formal, as usual. <laughs> as usual. I like that bit. Didn't include this number, I'm afraid. Jolly, merry and gay, the 6th of March, Independence Day. began as agitator, then he became popular leader. He continued to go further, and now he is Ghana's prime minister. Ghana, Ghana is the name. Ghana, we wish to proclaim, we will be jolly, merry and gay, the 6th of March, Independence Day. Kwame Nkrumah tells the people they're a free nation. Another nation in the world added to so many. Does that help? Remember this. Until the peoples are nations, they will not be recognized. And until the nations are free, they will not have peace. That is why the people shout for freedom. My friend, I'm telling you, I won't forget it. It wasn't because of that one man. It was just all of us happy. Ava! At long last, the battle has ended. And thus, Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. Africa wakes up, the sleepy giant stirs. Egypt, Ethiopia, Liberia, Libya, Morocco, Tunisia, Sudan, Ghana. These govern themselves. Others will follow, not in hatred, not in fear, but to raise mankind to its feet, all mankind. From now on, there is a new African in the world. That new African is ready to fight his own battle and show that after all, the black man is capable of managing his own affairs. We are going to demonstrate to the world, to the other nations, young as we are, that we are prepared to lay our own foundation. We are going to see that we create our own African personality and identity. And we again rededicate ourselves, not only in the struggle to emancipate other territories in Africa. Our independence is meaningless unless it is linked up the total replacement of the African continent. <laughs> And I want you all, those who have hats on, to take off your hats and let the band play our national anthem. And from now on, that national anthem is the national anthem of the Gogo to be played on all occasions. The lost islands of African humanity begin now to be joined to the main. The barriers go down. The world grows up. For humanity is one, indivisible. That is the strength we have to make a better world. The black and the brown, the white and the yellow, we are members one of another. Freedom! 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 Freedom. God bless you. Courage, freedom. These are Ghana's words for you, wherever you are, whoever you are. That we, humanity, have nothing to fear but our own denial of freedom. So let us go forward together, for humanity is one. Humanity is indivisible. Indivisible.